The righteous judgment found an excuse for the death of Jesus in the man Barabbas. The sins of Barabbas made it possible that Jesus would be condemned to death. And I am here today to declare to you that I am Barabbas. I am Barabbas. Who was this man Barabbas? There, there is nothing you can look in the Bible and you can read about the life of Barabbas and, and see how he grew up and what neighborhood he came from and the type of upbringing that this man had. You, you're not going to find that in the Bible. You're not going to find that. The only time that we see this man in the Bible is here at the trial of Jesus. We don't read anything happening after this account. What did Barabbas do after he, after he got his freedom? Where did Barabbas go? What was Barabbas' life after he received his freedom? We don't know anything about that. We, we can't look at the scriptures and find out that Barabbas did this or Barabbas did that. We don't know about that. The only thing that we know about Barabbas is the writing of his crime. It says that he was a notable prisoner. He was a notable prisoner. That means that his sins were very well known among the people. That if you went out into the crowd of people and you asked them, do you know about Barabbas? Oh yes, we know about that man. Possibly he had a very long list of crimes that he had committed in the past. I don't think that this was his first time ever to be incarcerated. I don't think that this was his first time to ever be in trouble with the law because the Bible says he was a notable criminal. A notable criminal. They knew about him. The people knew that this was not a good man. The people knew that this was not the kind of person that you wanted to invite over to your house and have dinner with. This was not, according to society, a good man. He was notable for his crimes. The Bible says that he had led an insurrection. He had led an insurrection. Now Merriam-Webster defines insurrection as this. It's an act or instance of revolting against civil authority or an established government. The root of the meaning of insurrection is rebellion. And so Barabbas had been guilty of the crime of rebellion against the authority that was in his life. Barabbas was filled, filled with rebellion against authority. Barabbas had decided that he wanted to throw off the governing authority in his life. He no longer wanted to be under the rule that was above him. He desired to exalt himself into the place of rulership in his own life where he could call the shots and he could do the things. He would bring about an insurrection that would put him in the place of authority and bring him to the place where he could make the decisions in his life. And in the process of his desire to exalt himself, he had committed murder. Someone died in the midst of his insurrection. We don't know who it was. Perhaps it was a soldier that was trying to protect the person that he was uprising against. Perhaps he himself had assassinated the person that he was trying to replace. We don't know, but in the midst of his rebellion and in the midst of his, his insurrection, he murdered. Now, according to God's law, Blood was demanded for the murderer. According to God's law, you murder, blood must be shed. Genesis chapter 9 and verse 6, God speaks very specifically about what his law says. It says in Genesis 9 verse 6, Whosoever sheds the blood of man, 
By man shall his blood be shed, for God made man in his own image. Barnabas was a murderer, and his blood was demanded by God for his sin. For his crime, justice demanded that he pay with his own blood. It would have been an injustice of God's law for Barabbas to go free. It would have been an injustice against God's law to look at Barabbas and say, I know that you have killed somebody. I know that you have caused the death of another man, but we will just wink our eye at it. We will just look at you and say, it's okay. No, for his crime, for his crime, he must pay. The blood had to be atoned for, and Barabbas was to pay. If Pilate had offered up one of the thieves, then there would have been no necessity of the blood. He did not offer up one of the thieves. If he had offered up one of the thieves, they could have looked at Jesus and said, oh, well, we don't need to crucify you. We don't need to put you to death because thievery, according to the law of God, is not necessity of the blood. But because it was Barabbas, because it was Barabbas, Pilate had an out. Pilate could look at the people. Would you take Barabbas or Jesus? Knowing that according to the law of God, somebody's got to die. Somebody has to die. And the crowd looked at Pilate that day and they said, give us Barabbas and take Jesus in his place and crucify him. Somebody has to pay. Jesus was condemned to die in the place of Barabbas. The blood of Jesus was offered up in the place of the blood of Barabbas. The life of Jesus was traded, substituted for the life of Barabbas. It was the sins of Barabbas that demanded the blood of Jesus Christ. Because Barabbas was released, there had to be someone that would bleed and die because the law demanded it. The law demanded it. Your Bible, your Bible, my Bible, is very clear about sin. Very clear about sin. And the Bible tells us of the origin of sin, where sin had its origin from. It says in 1 Corinthians 15 and verses 21 and 22, it tells us about how sin entered into mankind. It says, for since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. You understand that because of Adam's rebellion, because of Adam's insurrection against the law of God himself, he brought into mankind the sin that is passed from generation to generation, the seed of sin that is in us, the unholy nature, the corrupt nature that is inside of us was passed through the sin of Adam. And it has been from generation. It has gone throughout all of mankind. We are born in sin, the Bible says. We have the nature of wrath upon us. But the Bible makes a very interesting statement about Adam. The Bible in Luke chapter 3 and verse 38 has a very peculiar name that it calls Adam. We're talking about the one that brought sin to all of mankind. We're talking about the one that fell and, and brought about the sin that you and I struggle with today. But in Luke chapter 3 and verse 38, it says, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. The Bible calls Adam the son of God. The Bible says that Adam was the very son of God. How can Adam be the son of God? Because God 
made him, created him from the dust of the ground and made the body and breathed into him the breath of life. So God was the father of Adam. He was the son of God. We're talking about the flesh that was created and was made the son of God. The Bible says that sin came from this firstborn son of God into all of mankind. Through Adam, we were all made sinners. We became depraved in our nature. We were all the sons of this man and all had within us the nature of this man's sin. This made us all under the power and the authority of sin. We were all by nature the children of wrath. We all had the dreadful doom of judgment that was waiting upon each and every one of us. A judgment for our own sins. A judgment for our own rebellion against the authority of God. We all stand here today. Every one of us stand here today. And we are all Barabbas. We are all Barabbas. We all rebelled against God's law. We are all guilty of the blood of Jesus. Every one of us stand here today as Barabbas did on that day. We all have the same judgment that is hanging over our heads. We were all headed to the very same place. A righteous judgment for our actions. And it demanded our blood. But like Barabbas, but like Barabbas, the blood of Jesus made the difference for us. The blood of Jesus made the difference for us. His blood was payment for what we did. He took our place just as he did for Barabbas. You see, the blood of Jesus is not just any old blood. The blood of Jesus is not the blood of a common, ordinary man. The blood of Jesus is so much different than any other blood that has ever been coursing through the veins of any man on the face of this earth. You see, because it was the blood of Jesus that was made by the hand of God. The Bible says that God caused Mary to be with child. He did not do it in the natural way that a man causes a woman to become with child. He did not do it that way. What he did was create in the womb of Mary a child. He created a flesh and he made that flesh like he did on the day that he made Adam. He created a flesh inside of her. That flesh had no seed of mankind whatsoever. So the blood that came from Jesus had not the taint of sin from mankind because it was created by God himself and the blood of Jesus was pure and the blood of Jesus was spotless and the blood of Jesus had nothing in it of mankind save only the flesh itself the seed of sin was not in it The Bible, your Bible, read your Bible, it tells you that the blood of Jesus was far superior to any other blood. It was that blood that had the power to cleanse all mankind from sin. It was through the blood of Jesus that sin was purged and mankind was made free from sin. If it was the common, normal, everyday man, if it had been that Joseph and Mary had caused there to be a baby and God had just selected that one child to become the Messiah, it would not have worked because his blood carried with it the sins of all of mankind and the seed of sin that was in it. But God created a brand new person in the womb of Mary and inhabited that child himself. And inhabited that child himself. But the amazing thing, Brother Mitchell, the amazing thing about God is he does nothing by accident. The exchange for Barabbas was God's divine hand of showing to you and I his plan. God set up this moment. God caused this moment in time when the people would stand before Pilate 
And they would exclaim, give us Barabbas. God set up the moment that Barabbas would come to be crucified at the very moment that they were going to demand the blood of Jesus. God set all of that up. He set it all up. God put it in the heart of Pilate to offer up Barabbas and not one of the thieves. So that Jesus could take his place. I I am Barabbas. I am Barabbas. That man condemned to die was me. I stood in the place of Barabbas with all of my sins and all of the shame that was coming down upon me according to the judgment of God, the righteous judgment of God. I was, I was, I was worthy of the damnation that was that was due me i was worthy of this of, of the of the judgment of god it was not injustice for god to look at me and say i demand your blood it was justice of god to do that right, right, right. barabbas represents all of humanity for you see the name of barabbas itself is a revelation of the plan of God and His divine orchestration of the purification of our sins. The name Barabbas comes from two syllables. Bar, Abbas. Bar, the son of. Simon, Bar Jonah. Simon, the son of Jonah. You see Bar used in many, many names. Bartholomew. Bar, the son of. Abbas is the root word for Abba. Bar, Abba. The son of Abba, God. Bar, Abbas, name means the son of God. The son of God. Do you understand, church, that on the day of the crucifixion, the Son of God stood condemned for his righteous sins, condemned for what he had done, condemned for murder, condemned for the things that he had done. But the righteous Son of God, free from sin and free from anything wrong, took the place of the Son of God that was going to his righteous damnation. The Son of God, robed in flesh, loved the Son of God that had fallen in sin. The Son of God had mercy upon the Son of God that had fallen and was willing to go to the cross for him, was willing to go to the cross and be subjected unto the pain and unto the brutality of the cross for the Son of Man, for the Son of God that had fallen. It was the mercy and it was the grace of God. The first Adam fell and brought sin but the second Adam came and brought salvation the sin of the first Adam demanded blood but the sacrifice of the second Adam brought redemption from the first Adam's sin we are here today every one of us as Barabbas you and I stood facing the judgment of all of our sins of the rebellion that we had but Jesus Christ looked at you and Jesus Christ looked at me and said I'm willing to pay the penalty for the sins of mankind we all stand in the place of Barabbas tonight every one of us were the ones that were guilty of the sin and we were standing in judgment of God but it was through the mercy of God that he looked down on every one of you. And he looked down on me and he said, I know what he's done. I know what he committed. I did nothing wrong. There isn't a law that mankind has or that God has that should demand my death. But this man is on his way to a judgment he deserves. But I love him. And I care about him. And I don't want this man 
to wind up in an eternal damnation. So I, the Son of God, will take the place of the fallen Son of God and bring salvation for all the sons, for all of mankind. I'll do it. I'll do it. Jesus stood there that day and he knew exactly what was going on. He knew exactly what was happening. He knew exactly who that was. He understood everything about him. And he said, his cross, his cross will be my cross. Can we stand tonight? I've wondered. When Barabbas got let go, where did he go? Scott, do you, do you think Barabbas was at the crucifixion? Do you, think, do you think Barabbas realized, I am moments from death, and this man took my place? Do you think that Barabbas went up that hill, watched them lay Jesus down on his very own cross, and take those nails and put them in his hands, and then stand them up? Do you think Barabbas was at the foot of the cross looking and seeing the agony that was on the face of Jesus and realizing that should have been me. That should have been me. I, I did that. He didn't do anything. I wonder, was Barabbas at the cross? Was Barabbas at the cross? Where are you tonight? He took your place. He took my place. I am Barabbas. Would I go to his cross? Or would I walk out of this place tonight? and say, God, I reject your offering to me, and I reject the things that you have done for me, and I will not come to your cross, and I will not bow my knee before you. Or are you here tonight, as I am here tonight, looking in the face of Jesus and realizing that was my cross, that was my crucifixion, that was where I should have been, and bowing my knee before his throne today and offering my heart. We're going to take communion, but there is a divine move of God in this house tonight, and I'm asking you, if you want to, if you desire to, would you come forward right now, and would you open your heart, and would you commit yourself to him right now, and let God begin to move in your life, and let God begin to move in you. Would you come to the cross? Would you come to him, and allow him to minister to you right now? In the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. All together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful.
this day we remember the sacrifice on this day we remember what he did for us and in remembering we take communion could we all stand for a moment Scripture says that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, gave the sacrament of that we are about to partake of tonight. It's in remembrance of what he did for us. The requirement of this sacrifice, to partake of this sacrifice, the Bible gives is that a man examine himself that we do it of a heart that is contrite and a heart that is that is grateful of what God has done for us 
I let parents, moms, dads, I let you determine whether or not you want your children to partake of this sacrament. But I open it for everyone. And if you would return to your seats for just a moment. Please stand.